Today, I'm going to introduce you to day two. First of all, we will start with the keynote lecture by our friend who doesn't need any introduction, <laughs> Giselle Concepcion. And this will be followed by the Sabirino and Paz co-lecture in engineering. And then it will be followed by a, a panel presentation on COVID-19 that will be headed by uh, Krista Oreda and other speakers. The afternoon will start with a plenary panel on COVID-19. And last but not least, a special talk by Mrs. Bond from NASA Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> After which, we will bring the annual policy meeting and symposium 2023 to a close. <laughs> so sad. Now, I have another job to do. This is tough, okay? Uh, I'm introducing the keynote lecturer today, this morning, Dr. Gisela Padilla Concepcion a professor emeritus at UP Marine Science Institute and academician at NASD. Um, Giselle is not only known for her expertise in marine natural products research and the molecular, bio, molecular and biomedical sciences, but most importantly, I need a microphone. But also for her science advocacy. She is also considered as a champion of volunteerism and is very active in the campaign to increase awareness of the importance of science and technology and R&D to socioeconomic development. For her various efforts in scientific research, and in the promotion of the science, sciences, and for her studies on bioactive compounds from marine organisms and appreciation and protection of marine life, Padilla Concepcion was chosen as the 2013 Philippine Foundation of Chemical Societies ORD for Chemical Research. The 2010 honorary for outstanding achievement in science and technology of the Philippine Development Ayala Foundation USA. A year before that, she was given the Paz Severino Co-Lectureship Award in Science by PASE. She also received the 2008 Centennial UP Alumni Association, UPAA Outstanding Award for Science and Technology the 2007 National Research Council of the Philippines, NRCP, Achievement Award in Chemistry, the 2006 Gregorio Wizar Award for Basic Research, the 2006 NAC LELE DFI Award for Standing Research in Tropical Medicine. Oh my God, this is so long. <laughs> She ran yesterday and I, uh, uh, the 2000 Philippine Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Bio Biology PSB MD Research Award and the 2002 Dr. Eusebio Garcia Recognition Award for Molecular Biology and Molecular Pathology by the NRCP. You saw the team, uh, you said. Gisela Padilla Concepcion was induced, in, inducted. <laughs> oh my gosh, what did I do that? Inducted as academician in the National Academy of Science and Technology, NASD 2008. Dr. Concepcion was the vice president of for academic affairs in the University of the Philippine System in 2017. Giselle was the president of PAASE in 2011, then in 2020-2021. She is currently the president of Zonda Manila One. 
She is getting the UP Lifetime Achievement Award in August and was appointed a member of the Executive Committee of the National Innovation Council, NIC, under NEDA. And she has a website. Now this, uh, <laughs> it's too long. By the way, um, hey, hey, I'm not done yet. <laughs> and also, by the way, uh, this was uh, Ase and uh, Ernie Kernia uh, together uh, gave her high recommendation for that reason. And it's a well deserved position. <laughs> Uh, 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 this is something personal, and my prop is not here. I'm okay. pissed. <laughs> you know, I, I, I am a uh, secretary of DOD, and I have seen the evolution of Paase. I'm a crying this one. <laughs> and I have seen it evolve tremendously. And a lot of people are responsible for it. And one of this is the indefatigable <laughs> woman who never sleeps, that one. <laughs> As a secretary, I just don't give summaries. I give details. That's just my style. <laughs> you know? And I want the context in every decision that are made. That's just my style. Okay? And the thing is, um, there was a time when we had a discussion about a certain project, and my prop is not here, I'm pissed. Yeah. And there was a member there, I don't know if I should mention the name, she's not here anymore. <laughs> and she was, <laughs> she was there being a um, She was being uh, challenged, you know, about a certain uh, uh, proposal she had. And um, it was approved, approved a little bit, but it took some time. And when I asked her, how did you become to be an astig girl? Fierce. I said, it's mom Giselle. <laughs> yes, mom Giselle. I, 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 I hopefully not too much copying her. <laughs> because she's with the president next year. And that's a lot. Yeah, she's the next president. If that bird is not here, I'm kissing her. Really nice. I, I'm not supposed to use that word. Obliterate that, honey. <laughs> and, and I tell you what, you might not know this. When I was there in 2023, I was amazed. I attended a party for the MOU from Taiwan. And oh my God, and I said, all of this. I was overwhelming MOUs I had to write about is from this woman again <laughs> who never sleeps. You know, and, and also, by the way, we're now so ever organized, including a lot of people. And again, this was our idea of the, the idea of Red Council, which, which at first we thought was uh, not going to work. And it did work at first, but finally it worked to the help of uh, Ed Sell and Marge Pena. Okay, Ed, huh? It was <laughs> because of who? This one, the woman who never sleeps? Yeah, no, I know. But you think she's... Oh. I have to say, we are in the program for the same, uh, another email comes to this over to change the program. Oh, really? She was involved in everything? I didn't know that. Oh, my God. And, and, and by the way, time already, okay? I, I'm going on and on and on. Okay, but here, here, here she is in person. <laughs> oh, that's coming from you, uh, Lulu, is very special. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, um, um, when I was about to leave uh, the Hall uh, at that time, I remember saying, uh, so uh, you wanted to have come to disappear, and if you did pretty well, then uh, you'll still be around, you'll still be present. And that's really to give way to the next generation of leaders, and there are so many outstanding leaders who have to do it. So I thank you all for your support. 
and uh, I didn't sleep last night. <laughs> I was late for breakfast because I didn't have slides until last night. And so I got tired and my mind is so full you cannot sleep. So that's exactly what happened to me. And so I had a very light breakfast today. <laughs> But uh, I'd like to thank Mario, you, the audience, and everyone who organized this Zenia course to, uh, for having uh, this, uh, well, what's uh, really turning out to be a memorable class. So, so, so I'd like to thank Paolo for uh, nominating me to uh, the, the uh, NIC, and I was reluctant to say the least. And it's because, um, well, um, Sorry, I was on the end of <laughs> Yeah, seriously. So, um, but anyway, um, when uh, he won BDM, and um, when I said, uh, you have to dissociate the young man from the old man and give him a chance. And if uh, any of you have seen uh, the latest video of the Department of Tourism on love, the Philippines, and I might play later, you'll see that uh, he has some really competent people in his cabinet, in the executive branch. And uh, the tourism secretary in name is uh, Christina Francia Franco. She is the daughter of Gwendolyn Garcia, uh, 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 which is a mayor, of Stanley mayor. It's um, fantastic, and it's uh, really about what we are also thinking of. It would be a good uh, area of innovation in our country, which is uh, tourism, ecotourism, cultural, uh, culinary, and um, health and wellness tourism. It's, it's, it's a beautiful video. But anyway, uh, let me now uh, go to the slides. And uh, as I did uh, yesterday, I just cut and paste so many things because. You know, there's really no time. Um, it's just okay. Um, what's happening now? Um, you get everything you get. Yes. Yes. Go. Yes. All right. And um, well, this is like real time. You know, our um, uh, colleagues in the NIC uh, were in Malacanang at 2 uh, p.m. before that for their own taking. I got the photos, uh, Tirso, and they're in the Filipiniana. And they couldn't bring their families, which they wanted to do. Some even flew from uh, the U.S., but then there's no time. So it's just the four uh, together taking their own PBPM. And uh, I'm asking them, how is it? How is it? And everyone's saying, like, um, you cannot change anything on the agenda. You cannot, uh, you know, uh, just raise your hand and uh, make a comment there because uh, it's all in the agenda. It's very formal, it seems, those meetings in Malak. Anyways, so uh, let me say that there are about uh, a half a dozen councils like uh, the NIC in the Philippines, but this is a bit different. So it looks like there's so we have a little more maybe gravitas because it is um, based on law that was passed and uh, it's got a fund, an innovation fund. But uh, the law is something that um, uh, was signed, uh, I think, in 2018. And we have to give credit to our former NEDA secretary, our stalwart in FASA, none other than Ernie Pernia, okay? who I recall um, invited PASA to be a witness signatory to the first agreement uh, that was signed between uh, NEDA, DOST, and DTI. And, um, uh, he's, he's really a visionary, Ernie Bernia, and he's, of course, my very dear friend. And I will end this talk by uh, telling you a bit about what uh, we have discussed. And it's linked indirectly to a proposal that Dr. June Tigno uh, wrote over 10 years ago. Okay? But anyway, this is the Republic Act, so it's just there, but I'm not going to read these things. And um, this is the uh, structure of the National Innovation Council. So uh, consisting of the president, uh, chair, and then uh, the NEDA secretaries, vice chair, and then uh, all the cabinet secretaries. And um, then there are seven executive members. And to the right, you will see uh, that uh, they are supposed to come from the ranks of business, entrepreneurs, academe, and the scientists the community and at least one strong woman. So there are two uh, women in the NIC so far. 
a seventh would have been uh, uh, confirmed already by the meeting transpired a few hours ago. But let me point out that there is an executive technical board and there is a secretariat. And we have met with the secretariat. And, you know, we're not sure how, um, how good and competent the, the secretariat is. Uh, but let, let you know that our passive member, uh, Sara Dawa Dukanis, Professor of Economics in UPD Liman, is an uh, asset of the NEDA in charge of innovation. Okay, so uh, as early as February, she already told me that, you know, I was one of the uh, people who was selected uh, for this NIC. But anyway, what I'm trying to uh, tell you here is that um, we're not sure what the power or the, the role of the executive members uh, would be. It's not clear to us. So it says in the NIC, uh, the functions would be to develop the country's innovation strategies, number two, to, establish and administer the innovation fund and there's been a second call for proposals as we already know from um, Ralph and to coordinate monitor review and assess the country's strategic policies and programs okay but this is the <clears throat> and then these are the criteria for 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 us no? uh, for the selection of the EMs and the leadership network recognition awards vision and then um, well, you have to, uh, well, it's a term for three years and it's renewable, but um, you've got to show uh, output, uh, dear so if you want to be renewed and you've got to attend 75% of the meetings and we already missed, I missed two or three already. Okay, so it's okay, it's all right. The thing is, um, so this is a composition and then the, uh, the technical board, that's the one that seems to be the workhorse. So that workhorse, uh, I can imagine in government how it is, okay? That uh, you have all of these grant plans and uh, you know uh, organizations, and then um, the members will just delegate downwards to their uh, you know assistants and down down the line. So here it's already indicated. You cannot expect those secretaries or even the president to attend the meetings of the National uh, Innovation Council, which is uh, quarterly, so at least four times a year. And um, and then the secretaries will just uh, designate. Uh, point person, probably a USEC, okay, to uh, come up with uh, the materials. And then the USECs, uh, they're actually the ones who's, who are going to decide what are the uh, priority innovation areas required in their departments. It makes sense. It's bottom up, okay? But then uh, we're really not sure if we have any uh, direct, um, you know, input or power to uh, veto or to suggest on this is the uh, conversation is going on in our Viber group among the six of us, and we excluded the secretariat so that we would have no privacy. Uh, and uh, then uh, they were told that it's very formal. We don't just change the agenda, etc. cetera. So um, it looks like, um, you know, we have uh, some influence, but let's be realistic, it's kind of limited here. So, but let me tell you that our uh, co-members, uh, the exec executive members, very young and they're very dynamic and uh, they're very outstanding, just like yours. Okay, and so um, uh, there, um, the functions of the technical board are spelled out clearly. You know, they're really going to be the ones to determine uh, how this is going to go, and uh, we're not sure. To be honest, just looking through the documents, I could not tell exactly what the functions of the EMs would be. And um, I think that um, we just have to wait and see, and uh, you know, play by ear. Okay, so um, I'm going to share with you uh, the very, very uh, outstanding, uh, you know, members' information on them. And this is Ria Kanlas. She's from National University, and she's an engineer, and she's also an influencer, and she's an entrepreneur. And uh, it's very impressive credentials, just very articulate. So she has a following. And um, well, um, she went in in a Filipiniana, a very fashionable uh, Filipiniana. She's a fashionista, very articulate person and very level-headed as well. So um, she, she's got, she's a civil engineer. Okay, and then this is Mark uh, Gersama. I think he's, he's a fantastic guy. He's um, an NGO uh, leader, and he's into bamboo. He he hears from London now. Look at all of his engagements and look at his uh, uh, awards. 
And uh, this guy has been uh, and he's from SK State University. I mean, this is admirable and he's admirable and he's very humble and uh, also very articulate and uh, full of ideas. And it looks like we're going to have a good rapport. And uh, one of the events that we're looking forward to is when Tirso hosts us at Batsu and Kiss to have our brainstorming session. Okay? So we decided among ourselves that we will have one voice. We are going to uh, be collegial and we're going to hear each other's uh, views. And each one is coming from a different uh, you know, uh, standpoint. So anyways, this is a bam bamboo hive. Look at that. Okay, these people are very, very uh, uh, creative and they've been uh, in this kind of uh, innovation uh, business for some time. Now, many people know about this guy. So this guy, <laughs> I'm so happy to see, he has a chemistry uh, with, uh, chemistry from uh, FEU and I went to Ateneo. But this guy, and he's also from uh, like uh, Mindanao, he's quite famous. He was an undersecretary in the ICT and he's the guy that, um, that Joe Kusa knows quite well. So we talked about Joe, and um, he's very uh, circumspect and very, uh, he's 17 years old. So when I said, it looks like I'm the oldest in this group, and then he says, no, I'm 17. So anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so I said, okay, then I'm 17 oldest in this group. So undersecretary for uh, industry and technology development. Okay. And then finally, this guy, uh, this guy is a real uh, uh, powerball. So I heard of him uh, from way back from Maui Arroyo. I don't know if you know him. Maui was one of our uh, contributors during the uh, campaign for the National Science Complex. And um, she uh, ran Hybrid Diamond Summit. And so I remember this guy from way back. And look at him, he's been all over the place. He's from La Salle, he's from UP, from Boston. Tsinghua, that is the uh, premier university in England. Cornell, Harvard, Stanford. And uh, now he has uh, uh, Platina. But he's known for idea space. Idea space is usually that um, it's, it's again an innovation space, workspace. But it is uh, supported by MVP. Who is MVP? You know, any uh, MVP? The famous MVP, Mani Pangilina, of SMART. Okay, so, anyways, so very, very um, um, progressive, or you might say very um, uh, forward looking guy. He flew from New York for the uh, oath taking. And I don't know if he brought along his parents, and in the end, they could not bring their families. Ria had clothes and gowns made for her, parent, for her mother and for her daughters, and in the end, they could not make it to Manapanya. Mabuti na lang kami ni, ni Tirso, hindi nagpagawa. Pero yung kanyang, yung kanyang barong kahapon, that was really for a receipt. Receipt? Oo, okay. So anyway, it looks like uh, tama naman, tama naman. If Sara is behind all this, then uh, I think our first um, uh, uh, task is to improve the uh, document, which is the National uh, Innovation Agenda and Strategic Plan. So there is reference to coming up with that document. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry that this is uh, not clear, but this is the best I could do. And you're not supposed to read it. You just look at the, the, the titles and the subtitles. Unlocking Philippine Innovation. Ang dami na talaga mga, ah, sabi nga ninyo, hihilig sa mga, di ba, acronyms, <laughs> meron ng video niyan. Sabi ko sa loblog ko, ilang kaya itong Philippine Innovators nito? Baka katitin lang, ilan lang, no? Okay, so uh, I think so. Well, I, I cannot imagine high-level innovation happening in the Philippines in any great, in any great way. But of course, here we already know, uh, just from the presentations of uh, uh, Professor Albert and others, that yes, we have this capacity for innovation. All right, so um, uh, this is from Ambition Natin. Okay, and Ambition Natin uh, originated from the time of R.C. Balisakan, even before Ernie Bernan. But those two guys are friends. And there's a small community of economists uh, in, in the country, all uh, uh, connected with the SOE, GPSOE. And so um, uh, R.C. Uh, corrected me when I said that uh, Ambition uh, uh, 2040, was it? Or, and then PDP is attributed to Ernie, and he called me out, and he said Ambition was there before Ernie. And I remember the NEDA website, during time of ours, he's our member as well. Uh, it had so much information on the regions and the provinces of the country, including the population, the major industries, and a number of OFWs, which I was always uh, taking a, you know, note of. For example, in Central Luzon, I think there are about 2 million or so. 
of OFWs. What great uh, resource for, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, a uh, factor for social transformation as far as I'm concerned. I'm talking about uh, the, the other uh, people who are all over Europe and in Canada and the Middle East with the skills and competencies working in an advanced country who could contribute to uh, the Philippines. And that seems to be now the spirit of the love the Philippines. Love the Philippines, go back to the Philippines, love your country, be proud, be local tourists, and uh, also uh, ask your friends abroad to come over. And uh, we're already hitting now, according to the DOP the the secretary, we are hitting uh, uh, in the half uh, year of uh, four, four million uh, tourists. That's much lower than Thailand or Vietnam or, or other countries in the world, but still it's, it's picking up again. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, this is uh, something that uh, shared with us. So all of these ideals, Active, smart, innovative people, competitive and resilient economy, competitive, uh, so that's a, a duplication, is it, or a continuation? No, the food and agriculture, and then uh, what is this? Can I read this? Uh, transportation, the logistics, etc. All the things that are needed uh, for a progressive uh, economy. And uh, the way I have uh, looked at this for the longest time is, so I had this um, model of a 3D diagram, 3D, okay? So 3D, where the, the Z would be the number of persons. Always it's got to do with the number of, of uh, skilled, expert, and um, competent people, okay? including the tech folks, including the STEM graduates, okay? But then uh, on one um, axis, you would have to uh, look at what are the levels of expertise? Is it just um, uh, the Vox, STEM? Is it uh, masters? Is it bachelor's, masters, PhDs? Because only the PhDs are the ones uh, would be responsible for innovation. The rest would have to keep the industries going. Uh, and you just need the right uh, uh, knowledge, know-how, competencies uh, and uh, skills and the right values. And then the third axis would be, what are the services or what are the areas uh, of development that would uh, that these people would, would uh, serve? Uh, and then you would have to do a, a counting of the numbers per province, per region. There's got to be an accounting of how many people you need for each area of concern. And the areas of concern to me would be the basic ones, base, basic services, transportation, roads and bridges, and then basic health, uh, food, food uh, sufficiency, et cetera. And then there would be the areas of growth and development, which would be uh, in manufacturing, of course, in agri uh, biotechnology, and then mining, uh, and also uh, tourism, major. Okay, the, the fifth major area of uh, uh, GDP source is really our human human resources, our OFWs, major, major. Anyway, it looks like, you know, somebody like Sarah and people at the NEDA, I, 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 I believe in uh, uh, the capacity of the NEDA, and they would really be the source of the most accurate data through the PIDS, because there, there are researchers there, and then uh, the, um, the, uh, the PSA, Philippine Statistics Authority. So now we're gradually trying to get the data uh, more complete, but it's, it's still far from, from what we would, we would need. No? So anyways, look, uh, analysis, trends, trends, technological, political, economic, trust, and ethical trends, regulatory, and environmental. And all of these uh, would be uh, accessible from uh, the website. So if you're interested, I can share with you the materials. And look at these priorities. There's so many. Ten priorities. And then hobby, each for handle, uh, A4, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, these are available, and look at the priorities. And then Earl Lensha tells us, wow, where have you seen, uh, you know, 10 priorities? How can you even implement 10 priorities? Maybe just identify three to five. And we know for a fact that three to five or the two priorities of the PBB government are really food security and climate change. Those are the two major, and these are for poverty alleviation. So climate change, in the context of climate change, how do you uh, improve the productivity of our, of our agriculture and fisheries? Okay, because that's what's going to alleviate the poverty and um, malnutrition, undernutrition, and all of these, uh, you know, uh, conditions that we are in. Okay. 
Okay, but anyway, it looks like they have figured it out. Now, this is the National Innovation Ecosystem Framework, and this is focused on um, <clears throat> the uh, what you call this, uh, the players. The entrepreneurs are at the heart of it. Okay, and so what we have in the NIC are uh, the EMs are uh, they are there are such entrepreneurs, but my concern is really that uh, their ex experience of entrepreneurship is really in IT, ICT, uh, in uh, you know the the cyber systems, etc. And um, uh, I think that that is a double-edged um, capability. Okay, good if you're going to uh, try to uh, uh, document our culture, heritage, and do it for, for, for the touristic spots in our country. And I think that should be replicated in different parts of the country. It should present it to the DOT. I think so. But then <clears throat> when you have this um, innovative uh, systems or processes that can help uh, get uh, the, the, the supply to the demand, to the market, to the consumers, it's, it's very uh, uh, easy for the Taipans or the big businesses to just uh, go out uh, and um, get connections with the foreign uh, companies. And uh, this is what the government is trying to do. They're bringing like dozens of the, you know, our top businessmen, China to the US, to Europe, and uh, they are supposed to partner with the foreign companies, but the foreign companies have all of their products already that they would like to sell to us. And what are we? We are a consumer market of 100 million. And so I think that, um, you know, if you do not uh, use those uh, technological tools to improve the basic product productivity uh, in the different areas of development, so, you know, materials engineering. I mean, where can you uh, study materials, uh, whether it's for life sciences, biotechnology, or it, it is for, uh, you know, manufacturing or uh, machinery, automation, uh, in an idea space where you just have an empty room where you can just uh, uh, think about things and say, okay, I'm not saying that's not important, but it, it takes more than that for a country like ours to move forward. The areas of innovation or the types of innovation you know, there's just too too much that we need to do. Like, how are we going to extract uh, more uh, more of our high value metals from those uh, ores, you know, those crude ores? Okay. So, anyways, uh, but at the heart of it is uh, entrepreneurship. But I say at the heart of it is also engineering. The way uh, the, the disciplines of engineering, uh, 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 you know, uh, are are um, practiced. It doesn't uh, take only science. You've got to go to the next stage of uh, the, the engineering principles. It must be robust, it must be reliable, it must be productive, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have to have a business plan. And that was one of my frustrations uh, in UP as VPA, because we had many scientists and engineers uh, who uh, had such inventions and discoveries. And then I was going to be BA, the Rapa School of Business, you know, the bastion of VBA. And I was asking the dean and the faculty there to, um, you know, uh, come up with a business plan for our engineers and for our scientists. And they refused. Okay. No, no, they refused. But now the new dean, who happens to be my niece, <laughs> she's, uh, I think she's going to do it. Okay. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I think that um, if you do not have a, a, a business school that is into innovation or into uh, you know trying to support entrepreneurs, then uh, it's not going to happen from the university, and that's where you will get the higher value innovations. It's not just from uh, you know the citizens and this and that. Okay, uh, you know I know citizen science is very important as well. And you know the markets and the industry uh, would uh, tell us how to uh, innovate uh, further their products, their existing products. But you know that is what uh, the university is going to R and D is uh, to uh, produce products, processes, and systems uh, for uh, the benefit of society. Anyway, so I was looking for this, and I finally found uh, a framework uh, here. So, so I didn't have to get the one from USA Stride, okay, which I like very much. <laughs> and uh, you know, we work very closely with them. Okay, so anyway, here again, uh, there's lots of materials already: innovation actors and elements, and innovation enablers. So this is about governance, and these are the kinds of people who would be. Okay, so now let me tell you that aside from the Innovation Act, there is another uh, act. So uh, this apparently originated from the uh, legislative branch. And I was, we were told that uh, the champions of this uh, Innovation Startup Act um, are uh, 
Lauren Legarda and uh, Baba Kimo. So this is from Pinoy sign from uh, two administrations ago. And you know, this is 2018, 2019. So they had started even then. And uh, I uh, believe what um, uh, our consul, uh, to, uh, consul Philippines, uh, uh, Henry, this is Howard, very impressive guy, is telling us about uh, Duterte and then there. So uh, it looks like, you know, he did a lot of uh, groundwork and uh, did a lot of uh, things as well. Okay, so now um, uh, Startup App is, is really more like DTI led. A startup app, but the innovation uh, uh, act is uh, NEDA led, no? But uh, they they uh, go together. So we were uh, pointed out to this event, uh, which is DTA and Go Negocio. So Go Negocio is this uh, uh, Concepcion led, uh, and they have lots of entrepreneurs there from uh, people who are selling bibinka to people who are selling lechon, etc. So you have to decide what kind of innovation are we into. Anything that makes money, anything that um, alleviates poverty is good. If the product is good, then fine. And I say that ecotourism tourism is really a, a very broad framework for us to be able to develop good tela, you know, fabrics. When we go shopping abroad, we always want to buy some tela, like, you know, just <laughs> I don't know. The other guy he was wearing a batik uh, scarf, no? Of different categories of batik. Meron. Meron from the uh, very high uh, end silk batik, all the way to the blends that uh, they ask their uh, government employees to uh, wear every day. And that's why the batik industry uh, really flourished in Indonesia. But it takes more than that. The government invested in spooling technology, all of these spinning spooling technology. That's major. The government has to uh, make the right investments. <laughs> Anyways, um, for uh, tourism, then of course, culinary tourism, and then uh, you mga souvenirs, or so, uh, kaya kaya naman ng 3D printing, and then of course, the services that are being provided by, say, hotels and Airbnbs and all that stuff. Okay, so uh, food, everything, I mean, so many things would be uh, leveled up uh, by uh, tourism and it could be niche. And that is why we have this program then before the pandemic and there is uh, Gladys and she's going to implement it. There's a beautiful Gladys there. Look at her. Balik ka sa bayan mo tayo na. I mean, that should happen. That should really happen. Even then, we already had a plan in Tacloban, Alvin will host us. And then uh, in CMU, uh, Anne would host us. And then in, uh, oh my gosh, uh, you want to uh, buy the Lili Chinelas in uh, Chinelas in Lili, in the Laguna and Quezon uh, uh, own area, you know? So, be called. So, you know, we could have these things. Okay, anyway, uh, also, uh, Earl Valencia is a co-founder of Kubo. So that is a startup space. And he says, uh, they uh, would like us to uh, participate or to, to show up at this event. He arranged for this event, and wow, I think they're, they're like stars. And I uh, mean, you know, we're just going to be listening and watching how they, they do these things. This one, I asked Yusef Fita Aldaba of DTI, and she's still waiting uh, to, I'm still waiting for her to tell me if uh, the organizers would allow us some time. All right, so now, what's our papel here? So when we asked um, the secretariat, uh, the OIC, uh, who's going to help us, like us, the six members? Um, I mean, if you wanted to write things, you wanted to do research, like I'm retired, of course, there's also huge stuff, and then the others, I don't know, maybe they do have, but I don't. But anyway, <laughs> you know what they, said? what they said? It's the organization that nominated you that should help you. So I will turn into Boston for this, you see? And so I'm in uh, the NIC to represent Boston's interests, but because uh, uh, the nominee from NAS of NAS was not chosen, so I'm supposed to uh, kind of represent NAS as well. Okay, so uh, we should find ways uh, to work more closely with NAS, pero iba sila, iba mas uh, tuligal talaga dito sa, sa paas. Okay, but anyway, um, I mean, this didn't start uh, from nothing, and uh, this has been going on for some time. Oh, tapos na, no? 40 minutes na ba? You have two minutes. Two minutes. Ito na lang, sige, sige. You know, hindi naman magbabago yan eh. 
the fundamentals for innovation would still be uh, the what we call the SD human uh, uh, capital uh, resources development or the superstructure as a complement to the infrastructure. So we say that we still need to champion this. And so uh, we did this before, and then uh, we then we had the seven ten days of activism. This is a Mario already leading this. Okay, and I like thank, to thank Mario for his leadership, his very excellent leadership. Okay, by example, how many times have you been to uh, the Philippines since you became president? Uh, twice. Uh, since, since I came president. Yeah. Before. Oh, unbelievable. And you should see the museum that he has there in Morocco. So anyways, again, it's really food. And uh, these are some of the inputs of Joel, Quelio, the, the airplane, do you remember? Uh, the drag, uh, the, the thrust, the weight, and that. So uh, I thought that uh, these are some of the things that we really need to work, up, work, work on. Yeah? And uh, the fundamental investments, how can you uh, innovate and uh, get manufacturing uh, sector to uh, looking in the Philippines if your energy cost is so is so high, okay? Energy, and uh, well, uh, again, input from Gobet, it's, um, you cannot say, well, I know fossil fuels. You just have to manage uh, the carbon, uh, you know, the carbon uh, footprint uh, well, but then, uh, because from petrochemicals, you need, you get a lot of the starting materials for fine chemicals, for the chemical industries, for the, for, for all kinds of industries, okay? Uh, then, um, as I always say, it's pathetic. The 100-year-old, uh, uh, more than 120 na segura haba process that we learned from chemistry, which is uh, how to uh, make ammonia. Until now, we do not have it. We do not have it in the Philippines. Uh -huh. And ammonia is needed for what? Needed for fertilizers and also for drugs, for chemicals, etc. Wala pa rin ng mga you know? Okay, so um, uh, see, even then, I already had Batsu there. I had DLSU juice. See, UP, DLSU, Batsu, EVSU, and uh, Rizal. You know, these are our MOUs. All right, so um, uh, this is from uh, NAS, and uh, there is where I say carbon sources, oil, natural gas, renewables, the mother of all commodities, energy, electricity, transportation, fuel, materials. We have all the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering. We are a staff of association to the indefatigable and incomparable, you know, president of South ASEM, Gisela P. Concepcion, PhD, academician, National Academy of Science and Technology and ASD Republic of the Philippines, for sharing her invaluable knowledge as keynote speaker for uh, this uh, morning's uh, session. Uh, given this uh, 43rd annual uh, PAASE uh, meeting and symposium, uh, Orlando, Florida, June 30, 2020. Thank you so much for the bottom of my heart. Congratulations, Giselle. Thank you. Uh, so now I'll uh, jump on. Starting to look at the internet. Yeah, we can. I don't know.